Here in the United States, Toyota is pouring nearly half of a billion dollars into future four-cylinder production. Is this the end of the V6 as we know it? <laughs> Over the Toyota newsroom, Toyota is investing $383 million into US production for four cylinders. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars. If you enjoy that sort of content, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> make sure to hit the like button for the V6, even though we're talking four cylinders today. I think the V6's time is numbered. Now, stay tuned because after we go over this big investment piece, we're going to go over the spreadsheet and talk four cylinders because that is the future of combustion for Toyota. So here we are, engine casting investment across four United States states furthers vehicle electrification efforts. So even though we're talking about the good old internal combustion engine here, this is for electrification and that next step, kind of that, that stop gap between full battery electric, which I don't know if Toyota ever plans to be fully battery electric. We'll see, they, they might go with synthetic fuels at some point, but that's a long time from now. Same thing with Toyota making 10 million BEVs a year. I just don't see it happening in my life. So let's read into this. This new investment supports the production of four cylinder engines, no V8s, no six cylinders, this includes the options for hybrid electric vehicles at its Alabama, Kentucky, Missouri, and Tennessee plants, all kind of in the traditional south of the United States, or should I say SEC country? <laughs> Starting with the big boy investment at Huntsville, Alabama, 222 million. Toyota Alabama will create new four-cylinder production line with the capacity to produce engines for both combustion and hybrid electric powertrains. Additionally, the facility will expand its footprint by 114,000 square feet, which marks the plant's sixth building expansion since 2003. Toyota Alabama has the capacity to build 900,000 engines annually and represents a nearly $1.5 billion total investment. The next highest bidder for this investment is Toyota Missouri and Troy. Toyota Missouri's investment provides new equipment to build four cylinder engine heads on three production lines. The plant has the capacity to build more than 3 million cylinder heads annually and represents $564 million investment. That's a lot of cylinder heads. Next largest investment is in Toyota Tennessee at Jackson. This plant will update equipment to build new four cylinder engine blocks. The plant has the capacity to produce more than 2 million engine blocks annually and represents a $425 million investment. And last on the list is the largest plant in the entire world for Toyota. The Kentucky plant is getting just a small amount of this investment, just 16 million. TMMK is expanding flexibility of the four cylinder engine line announced last fall which will better position the plant to meet customer demand. The plant's powertrain facility can produce up to 600,000 units annually. They say TMMK produces seven Toyota and Lexus models, but that will change because we know that the Avalon's dead. The Lexus ES will end production there at the end of 2023. Um, and it will be interesting to see what vehicles kind of fill in that dead space left by the Avalon and the Lexus ES. Besides the vehicles, they also produce four cylinder and six cylinder powertrains. Overall, the plant represents an eight and a half billion dollar investment. So they are dumping money into four cylinders, largely because that's what they have to do to meet emission standards, as well as fleet fuel economy, all those cafe ratings, all that fun stuff. Um, that kills the fun of like the V8, long live the V8, like the LC500 sitting in my garage right now. Long live the V6, but you know, there comes a time where change is necessary, I guess. So that's what we're talking about right now. So on this spreadsheet, I have all the four cylinder engines that Toyota brings to the United States market. I'm not talking about Japan, Europe, none of that. This is just engines in Toyota Lexus vehicles, specifically in the United States and probably Canada for that matter. We're gonna start with the little displacements and working our way up to the largest displacement engines that we see. Currently, we have a 1.8 liter inline four, the 2ZR engine. It is in the Toyota Corolla, kind of like the base grades, the L, the LE, I think the XLE, which is not a base grade, but I think it still has this 1.8 liter, just 139 horsepower, 126 pound-feet of torque. I think this engine's 
potentially on the chopping block as it's based off of older Toyota technology. And what about the 2ZR hybrid engine that we see in the Corolla hybrid and the Prius? Well, it might be dead as well. Look, there's a new Prius coming out at least by the end of this year, from my understanding, unless it's been delayed, and we're hearing more power output. So I think the next logical step is to replace this pretty efficient 1.8 liter. It's tried and true. It's been in the Prius lineup for a long time and replace it with this two liter M20A FXS. This is a dynamic four series uh, that we see not only with these four cylinders, we see it in the three cylinders um, in the Yaris as well as the GR Corolla is based off this sort of dynamic force technology as well. We also have the twin turbo V6 seen in the Toyota and Lexus lineups that's based off this dynamic force technology, makes it more efficient and burn cleaner, right? I think the new Prius could very well use this two liter hybrid system as well as the Corolla hybrid. And if you think about it, all the Corolla hybrids, as far as I'm aware, are brought over from Japan, but we're able to start making these engines stateside, which by the way, this 1.8 liter hybrid engine is not made here stateside, I don't believe. So if we're able to start making this two liter hybrid, it's going to be able to permeate more Toyota and Lexus products. So this M20A FKS is produced, I think, in that Mississippi plant. 169 horsepower, 158 pound-feet of torque. It's only mated to the CVT direct shift that I'm aware of, which has the real first gear and then simulated gears after that. We also see it in the Lexus UX200. I don't really like it in the Lexus UX200. In a Corolla and Corolla Cross, it's good enough, but you're talking about luxury. There's nothing about this engine, especially this transmission that screams luxury. Anyways, I could go down the rabbit hole complaining about the UX any day of the week. Um, back to the M20A hybrid FXS engine uh, made to the eCVT, which is far superior than any other CVT in the Toyota lineup. And it's not really based off the same technology as the direct shift CVT or the other belt driven CVTs. Anyways, 181 horsepower. But what's going on in Europe is that the Corolla Cross Hybrid, which we don't have yet, it's supposed to be coming by the end of this year here in the United States, but that Corolla Cross Hybrid is sporting like 190 plus horse, like I want to say 195 horsepower, and that is for the European spec. Meanwhile, the more expensive Lexus UX Hybrid still has this 181 horsepower spec. So there's a really good chance that when the UX gets a 2023 minor refresh, we could probably see that power up update uh, for that engine and vehicle as well as a Corolla Cross Hybrid probably getting uh, the 195 horsepower or so hybrid setup and it'll probably be all wheel drive only in the Corolla Cross as well. And yeah, like I said, there's a good chance that the Prius and let's say the Corolla Hybrid have this sort of hybrid setup. Talking about another dead engine like the 2ZR, this is the 3ZR that we see in the CHR and the CHR's volume has really been pulled back by Japan. They're all made in Japan, at least the ones we get. And I think there are some made in Turkey, but we don't get those. We get the ones made in Japan. They send them over here to the United States because I guess the Corolla Cross wasn't available when this vehicle debuted. And remember, the CHR was supposed to be a Scion. Anyways, the CHR could be discontinued for the United States. Toyota said it's supposed to be alongside of the Corolla Cross, but What's the point of having both of them? So this engine is pretty much dead in the water like the 2ZR and we're gonna go into the like the new era of Toyota engines. And before we do, we're going to just talk about this 2.7 liter because I think it's dead in the water as well that we see in the Tacoma. This 2.7 liter with 161 horsepower, it's fairly torquey for a four cylinder thanks to large displacement. But when we're able to have a 2.5 liter that makes more power and more torque, what's the point of the 2.7 liter that is less efficient, right? So anyways, let's go to the big boys here. This just debuted the 2.4 liter T24A FTS turbocharged four cylinder just debuted in the Lexus NX. And guess what? They're making this engine stateside now, or at least in North America, because the NX production has begun this past month in Ontario, Canada, alongside the RX. So this engine built by North American hands for sure, only is made it to an eight speed automatic as we know, 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. We only know of two applications it is going to be in, at least in the near term. I think it's safe to say 
Uh, the RX 350 redesign will replace the V6 with this four cylinder and the NX 350 is the only vehicle currently on the market that has this engine. And if that's the case, all these larger TNGAK platform vehicles like the NX RX, ES, Camry, Venza, etc., if they traditionally had a V6 or something like that, I think it's gonna be replaced by this 2.4 liter turbo that gets maybe slightly better miles per gallon, but definitely a, a more performance oriented, a lot more torque and just better drivability with that low down torque for, for da daily driving. Now, I think we're also gonna see this in the upcoming Lexus three row crossover, the TX and the Toyota counterpart, which is the Grand Highlander. Both of those vehicles will be built here stateside in Alabama, sorry, Indiana. And I think it's also a likely case that the Tacoma gets rid of the three and a half liter V6 as 2.4 liter turbo slots in. Now, what about the upcoming forerunner that should be coming out in the next Next couple of years well that's probably the good good case scenario for this 2.4 liter as well replacing the one gr engine with the four liter v6 now the fun stuff this is a little bit more speculative on my part but we're hearing reports out of japan that the next rx will have a single motor hybrid and a traditional automatic transmission connected to this 2.4 liter turbo so i'm expecting around 350 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque you'll still be getting over 30 miles per gallon but it's going to be a lot of performance as well as efficiency in one package so we have trademarks already for the RX 500H, the TX 500H, um, the Grand Highlander could be getting it as a result as well. So when I look at these numbers, what comes to my mind is sort of like V8 power and torque. But the thing is here, it's a four cylinder and you're going to have electrification. So it's gonna feel a lot different than a V8. It's gonna sound a lot different than a V8, but the efficiency will probably be over double that in terms of miles per gallon versus a V8. So pretty cool. Stay tuned because I will update you guys on this powertrain as we get closer to the RX reveal some point at this year. We're here in summer, maybe later. Two and a half liter. This is the workhorse for Toyota, at least here in North America right now. The A25 FKS, eight-speed automatic transmission. Um, we see it in the RAV4, we see it in the Avalon, we see it in the Camry, we see it in the Lexus ES250 all-wheel drive, we see it in the NX250 an all-wheel drive version as well. So, and probably out of all the engines you see on here, probably the, the most mass-produced one um, as well 207 horsepower 186 pound feet of torque but this two and a half liter really shines is in the fx version where we see it in tons of different products we see a 219 horsepower version in the rav4 hybrid that gives us like 42 miles per gallon we also see this in the rav4 prime the nx 450h plus the upcoming rx 450h plus but we also see it in all these other hybrids the avalon rest in peace right um the nx 350h the rx 350h we see it in the sienna and highlanders now those have 245 horsepower that's the highest horsepower variant that we know of with this engine the funny thing is those also use just the old school nickel metal hydride battery whereas the new lexus nx has 239 horsepower but it uses lithium ion instead so i hope that spreadsheet gave you an idea of all the turbo and naturally aspirated uh four cylinders as well as hybrid variants variants of those four cylinders here in the United States and all those hundreds of millions of dollars are really going to be flowing into the dynamic force engines which are all on the screen right now we have the two liter which can be hybridized we also have the 2.4 turbo which can be hybridized and this two and a half liter workhorse mass like this is the big one in terms of the volume we see here in the united states and of course the hybrid version and variants of that even the plug-in hybrid so long live the v8 long live the v6 their days are numbered unfortunately and electrification is exciting but when everything is like we just have Hey, here's your selection of four cylinders. Have fun. Like it's just not as fun as it used to be, in my opinion, with V8s, V6s, four cylinders, and and parts of the world also have the three cylinder uh, dynamic force engines, which I guess I could have put on here. But this is my four cylinder spreadsheet because four cylinders are the investment. Who knows? There could be a time where Toyota starts investing in three cylinders here stateside, but I highly doubt it. I think. 
for at least for our market, the two liter naturally aspirated should be the baseline. We don't need to have this 139 horsepower anemic 1.8 liter in the lineup anymore. Just mass produce the M20A engine with 170 ish horsepower for the entry level Corolla and Corolla Cross and scale up from there. So four cylinders ranging from about 170 horsepower and then all the way to 350 horsepower when you include electrification and turbos. That's going to be the future of Toyota here in the United States and most of the world to be honest. But I'm going to end it there. Hit the like button if you haven't subscribed for more Toyota Lexus news. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.